Yo, what up, peeps? So if you're watching this video, the nine times out of ten, you're wondering how can you fly with your American bully or any other dog for free? So I'm going to get into the details exactly how do you go about that and what classifies a dog to fly for free. So here I have my Department of Transportation paperwork that you must fill out for any airline that you want to get on. But before you get onto the airline, you need to know that airlines classify dogs in three to four different categories. One is a service dog. Two is a emotional support animal. Three is a pet. As pets, most airlines limit the amount of pets that you can actually have on each flight inside the cabin. Now, there are some pets that can fly uh, under the cabin in the storage area. Now, you can look at some more information on that. This is more so going to pertain to flying with your dog inside the cabin. So if you say that you have a pet, most time airlines allow you to have anywhere between two to five pets total within the cabin. So you want to make sure that you uh, kind of pre-register and let the airlines know ahead of time, that, hey, I'm going to be bringing a pet if that's what you're doing. So, but as a pet, you have to pay for them to get onto the flight. Emotional support animals. Most times you can get away with this if you live in a apartment building. You will see that, hey, if I classify my dog as an emotional support dog, I don't have to pay the fees associated with my dog living here with me. I don't have any experience that. That's just the research that I've done, that that's how you can kind of uh, usurp those fees. But with airlines, airlines do not recognize emotional support animals. So therefore, they're gonna look at them as a pet, which means you're gonna to have to pay for them to be in cabin with you. Now the third type, which is what I'm gonna be talking to you about today, which is how I'm flying Kino, is a service animal. Now, even though it says service animal, they only recognize dogs as service animals. Cats can't be service animals, reptiles can't be service animals. The only service animal that is recognized by the ADA the American Disability Association are dogs. They recognize dogs as service animals due to the fact that dogs can be tasked, trained to perform a service for their owner. Legally, the ADA states, in order to be recognized as, as a service animal, your dog has to be trained to perform a task or currently in training to perform a task. That is what the ADA recognizes as a service animal dog. Now, I'll explain maybe more later in this video, but for now I wanna kinda of get to that. The ADA says, the American Disability Association states that a service animal dog that is trained to perform a task is essential to that person therefore if a dog is ada compliant which means they've been trained to perform a task or are currently in training to perform a task then legally that service animal service dog has to be allowed in any public areas that normal people me normal pet owners can go. The dog has to be able to go as well because the dog has to perform a service to protect the person, uh, uh, look out for the health of the person, numerous things that dogs can be trained to do. You don't have to show what the dog is actually trained to do, which brings me to another point that's really important. The ADA, in order to protect people's livelihood um, and not be discriminatory against people with disabilities, then they require public entities can only ask two questions when presented with a service animal. The two questions that public officials, uh, TSA agents, uh, clerks, managers, anybody, the only two questions they can ask you is, is this dog a service animal due to a disability? They can't ask you what a disability is, they can't ask you how disability came about, none of that. The second question that they can ask you legally is, what is the dog trained to do? And that is important. Is this dog a service dog due to a disability? 
what is the dog trained to do? Now, out of respect for everyone that's going to be uh, tuning into this video, I won't actually say what my dog is trained to do. But some causes and some reasons why people get service dogs is people suffer from epilepsy, people have seizures, people pass out, um, people get low blood sugar. Dogs can be trained to alert their owners of those things. So if you have a dog that is in training or trained to help you alert you of those things, then your dog can be classified as a service animal, service dog. Kino is classified as a service dog. Therefore, all service dogs fly for free in cabin. That is the only way to fly a big dog that won't fit under the seat in front of you in a cabin on any major airline for free. Now, I'm flying United. I haven't tried this with International, so do your own research on that. Um, I'm going from Texas to South Carolina, but that's really important to know that one, what the ADA says that public entity can and can't ask you. Two, knowing the questions that they can ask you have, and being prepared to answer those. So, is this dog a service dog due to a disability? Yes. What is the dog trained to do? Well, hey man, this dog is trained to alert me when I'm about to pass out. That's it. Not, hey, I have this symptom, I have this diagnosis, the dog is able to do this, that when I do this, the dog is gonna do this, this, this. You definitely don't have to demonstrate what the dog can do and what the dog is trained to do, because that would be discriminatory. Like, you know, somebody actually would show me. Legally, they cannot do that. And I'm gonna link the ADA website so you guys can do your own research and go and look at it for yourself, but legally they cannot do that. So being aware, doing your own research and knowing what you can and can't do to classify and to fly and to travel with their dog is really empowering. I would encourage anybody to, yes, this information I gave you, I've looked it up. I'm gonna show you what it's like in real time as we go through the airport, but that's what it takes to classify your dog as a service dog. That is how you are going to be interacting with from people who may be a little skeptical. They're going to ask you those two questions. Be prepared for those. And then the last part, which is a big part, is optics is everything. When you're in a terminal, people are going to be looking, especially if you say you have a service dog. If you notice, anytime you've seen a service dog, most service dogs are really well trained. They're right next to their owner. They're not barking. They're not super aggressive. They're not doing anything that normal pets and things like that do. So one thing you have to be mindful of is your dog cannot pee or poop in the terminal in the airport. That's going to be a red flag to them. Your dog cannot be overly aggressive to anyone biting, barking. That's going to be a red flag to them. Um, anything that does not display poise, control, obedience, train or training is going to be a red flag and you're going to put yourself at risk of not being able to have that dog classified as a service dog. So one thing that I did, now Kino has never been overly aggressive. Um, I can tune him up. I have control over him. He has a strong recall. Cool. Peeing and pooping. Normal bowel movements, right? So what I did was I fed Keno earlier. Now, we fly at about 6.30 this afternoon. Keno ate around 7 or so, 24 hours, like yesterday. He ate 24 hours. So he, he won't have any food within 24 hours of us actually taking off. On top of that, I made sure I, take, I took him out regularly today. He pooped at least three times and then I took him to another part, a new area that I've never taken him to and let him mark it up. So now he's sprinkled himself out. I haven't given him any water and I won't give him any water. And maybe until we kind of come down on the flight, or maybe during flight, I may let him sip a little bit out of my cup, but I won't have to worry about peeing and pooping at the terminal. Keno is really well house trained, indoor trained anyway. Um, but you still want to take those extra precautions because sometimes dogs get nervous. Sometimes dogs, you know, with the, everything that's kind of going on. I don't worry about that with Kino, but still, it's a it's a good precaution to take. So just remember that as you're traveling, you know, don't feed them super close to the flight. Make sure that you take up water um, 12 to 15 hours before the flight. Don't give them any more water. Make sure you take them out routinely. I'm going to take them out again, so he's going to have another chance to pee and poop. Just make sure that they are, that you're doing your part to make sure that you are being proactive so that you can fly with your American bully or any other dog for free.
as a service dog. So then I started like looking at his pictures and I accidentally So even though Kino used the bathroom at home, I wanted to take him outside just for one good measure. So we walked down below the airport terminal. Good, that's what I like to see. Okay. You good? Good. So I gotta walk back up that hill. So, we made it inside the airport, made it through TSA pre-check. Did not go any of the way I thought it was going to go, actually. I thought Keynote was going to be all nice and smooth. I thought he was going to understand where I was coming from and not make us look crazy. So, because I have his prong collar, so I can correct him. Hey. <clears throat> so I can correct him. Uh, it kept ringing through the TSA machine. So, they asked me to take it off of him. And I was like, man, really, I really don't want to take this collar off my dog. And <laughs> he was like, man, it keeps beeping. He asked his supervisor. Supervisor was like, yeah, just take it off of him. Let him go through. I was like, all right, cool. As soon as I drop it, Keno, dark, because Ashley's up ahead of me. And he goes, and he's running around, sniffing stuff. It just looks like no total control. And I'm just sitting there like, dang, bro, why you make me like? I didn't account for that. So next time, I would just have something that can go through the metal detectors that won't ring off um that's definitely a move i will make so i won't have to be in that situation but at least that they didn't you know they didn't turn us around they didn't say that hey this dog can't be classified as a service animal right now so that's a good thing coordinate oh, okay cool yeah i was wanting some stuff for social media as well so you know use the restroom outside i'm glad he did that Making our way downtown, walking at a quick pace. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I can use this for social media now. All right, cool. So the good thing is we made it into the airport, made it past TSA pre-check, and we're in here now. You will have to tune in to the YouTube to figure out exactly what happened. Did Keno behave himself? Did he run wild? Did he do something unexpected? You're gonna have to find that out on the YouTube. But we in here, we're making our way. So, whew, let's roll. We're flying with him as a service animal. So this is the first time that he'll actually be able to fly in cabin before, you know, when they're a puppy, they have to fit in front of the seat if they're a pet. At that time, I think they're a pet, but. I'll be back. Okay, but. Um, reading up on like the American Disability Act, um, basically you can, if they're, t if they're tasked, if they're trained to do a task, they have to accompany the person they need the task for. And so I've trained him to do something for me to help me out. So, um, so that's how he can fly. He can fly for free. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to buy like an No, no. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Let me go. You know what seat we are? Alright guys, so we made it. Kino is laying down like a champ. I'm going to pull his head up. Good evening everyone from the flight deck, the captain speaking, welcome on board our flight to uh, Greenville. Once we are airborne, one hour and four. You know. the buckle, tighten by pulling the loose end of the strap, lift the buckle to release. In case of unexpected Sit turbulence, keep your seatbelt fastened, even when the seatbelt sign is off. Please take a moment to look around in order to familiarize yourself with the aircraft. This airbus is equipped with four exit doors, two on each side of the aircraft. 
If the doors are open in an emergency, slides will automatically inflate. It's unlikely, but